We are back YouTube and in today's video we are going to be reacting to the YouTuber that dissolved bodies for $160. Like why should you do something like that? What kind of mess are you going through for you to be dissolving bodies for $160? Anyways, let's get right into this video. Justin Palma Gutierrez had the world at his feet. His rap career was just starting to take off, but he needed a little side hustle to keep his music career moving, and his side gig involved dissolving bodies in acid for a local cartel. With these actions, his humanity dissolved too, and he exposed the truly depraved depths that people will do for a quick buck. All right. That's crazy. He was working for the cartel, actually. He was working for the cartel, and he was a YouTuber. He's from Mexico. That, that's what I'm saying. Christian Palma that's what I think. has been rapping since his teens, and as he grew into his 20s, showed a lot right. of promise. He amassed 125,000 YouTube. Yo, bro had 125 YouTube subscribers, and he was dissolving bodies for $160, less than 2,000 from where I'm from. And wait, maybe his YouTube didn't pay that much. Like, for real. That's the dark side, bro. Subscribers and had two separate Facebook pages with a combined 140,000 followers. He was also scheduled to That's perform right. at a music festival in April 2018. He rapped about drugs and violence with one song named Death Has No Schedule. He portrayed the typical image of a gangster rapper who drove fast cars and motorcycles around poor neighborhoods. Through his YouTube channel, he made $155 to $310 per month. And at 24 years of age, Gutierrez now had a wife and children he needed to provide for his producer sismo said he had dreams of growing of making a living from this so his parents wouldn't have to struggle anymore so his family could get ahead but this video showed a gruesome look at this look at this his music career was promising he even had uh, concerts gigs everything booked out for him already Okay, I want to I want to see where this goes. I want to see where this goes. That's why I don't want to talk much. I want to I want to see the entire context of this thing. Some side to him, which the people who worked with him and his fans. He, he was a gang member. Let's just say that. Showed footage of a bloodied man on the ground with his hands tied. His producer explained in Oba's case. Was that a real body? Was that? A... Regarding the video of the tied up man. It was symbolic, saying he was killing them with his music. In another one of his songs, he raps, quote, My voice will be the house where they rest in peace, so they are nah. tormented in darkness. Nah. Like it. Although the rap... The guillotine. Where is the guillotine? This guy needs the guillotine. Give him the guillotine. Like, for real, he was talking gang stuff in his music. Probably even did some of those things. Probably. And was a YouTuber at the same time. It was clear that Gutierrez and Imagine. Imagine I wake up and I'm like, oh, what's up, YouTube? Uh, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. All the money will go to charity and all that stuff. Then the day before, I was actually merging people, putting them six feet under. I can't say the word right now on YouTube. YouTube is a little bit strict with certain words, but bruh, that's just tough. That's just stuff. An extra job to keep his music career going. A man named El Cochi got in touch and offered him a job at a mechanical workshop where he earned between eighty and a hundred dollars per week. He was also spoken to about other duties he might have to carry out too. Gutierrez was now working for the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. Formed in 2010, this cartel branched off from the Sinaloa Cartel to start its own racket. And because they went out on their own, they also waged war with any cartels who dared stop them. This this cartel made headlines in 2015 for a series of attacks on security forces and Bro was working with the big boys. He was working with the big boys. Mexico's military, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel took the fight to the next level, shooting down a military helicopter, helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade, killing people, six of them, last week. Look at that. Gutierrez. How is it in Mexico that the cartel is actually battling the military? It's like... There is an army, there's an army in a country, and in that country there are sub-armies as well. They're fighting their own government. Crazy, bro. 
This is crazy. He's clearly working with a dangerous group of people. It would be sooner rather than later that he got caught up in their deadly workings. While Mexico was embroiled with gang violence, the country finally had some good news they could celebrate. Guadalajara was the hometown of Guillermo del Toro, who had recently won Best Picture at the 2018 Academy Awards for The Shape of You. To have such a positive and uplifting international story about someone from Mexico was a breath of fresh air. And for film students at the University of Audiovisual Media in Guadalajara, he was an inspiration. One day in March, three film students, Daniel, Salomon, and Marco, went to work on a school film project. They decided to film at a property owned by an aunt of one of the students. Little did they All know, right. they were filming at a hangout spot for the Nueva Plaza game. And Please don't tell me. Please don't tell me the guys ended up dying or something. The Jalisco cartel had their eyes peeled on this spot for possible members to attack. They were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Suddenly, the students were approached by what looked like policemen holding guns who forced them into a car. But they soon realized that these police uniforms were merely a front. It was the Jalisco cartel, and they thought they were kidnapping possible members of the Nueva Plaza gang. The fact that they were instantly filming in this location wasn't believed. And even Bro. if they were... This is what we call wrong time, a wrong place, a wrong, wrong place at the wrong, at the wrong time. Yeah, because this place was the auntie's place and these guys just went there for filming and ended up being captured by a rival gang cartel thinking like they are part of it, another cartel or something like that. There's some crazy paradox. Some Members, this would have been the perfect excuse for them to use. They began beating them, and these beatings took Yo. such a toll that one of them died. The other two were now witnesses to their murder, so they needed to be killed too. That night, at 3 a.m., Gutierrez received an urgent call on his phone. It was from the cartel, and they made reference to pozole, a famous Mexican soup. Gutierrez... Soup? Soup? A cold word for... That's some... Um... Um, acid, I guess. A cold word of cooking people up in acid is called soup. But um, that soup looked great, though. He knew that it would be a different type of soup he would be working on. He told his wife that he was urgently needed at the mechanic workshop and got an Uber ride over. When he arrived, there was a water tank and three lifeless bodies. They were tossed into an acid bath head first. The tank was full of hot sulfuric acid. This would firstly dissolve the skin tissue and organs, then eventually dissolve bones and teeth. Sometimes the bath Hell. needed to be stirred, too, which would speed up the process. But this process takes quite quite a long time. In fact, Gutierrez left the bodies on the tank to dissolve by themselves and arrived two days later to see if it had done its job. If there were any traces of the bodies left, the remaining fluid would go into a drain and any sludge would be dumped in a nearby field. It was an incredibly gruesome job. That Let me say this. From what I've observed, this rapper was actually a needle in a haystack. He wasn't even part of the squad he was just doing like gigs part-time jobs your friends are out here going to mcdonald's target or chick-fil-a you are out here deserving bodies for a hundred and sixty dollars if you're doing something under a million dollars that is shady bro you just a creep you just a creep Guillotine, second time. I've called out for the guillotine. Give him the guillotine, bro. Most people would refuse to do for any amount of money. Dieres, meanwhile, was making $160 for this. The disappearance caused outrage across the country. 30,000 people went missing due to the country's ongoing drug wars, and three more had just been added to this figure. And behind those figures were loved ones taken from their families and lives ruined forever. Three days after their disappearance, students tough, from their tough, college bro. held a protest and urged the authorities to find them before it was too late. We're students, not criminals, they shouted. Will I be next? In solidarity with their message, the staff from the university staged a walkout protest the next day. While all of this was happening, Gutierrez was at home watching the coverage of it on TV. In his testimony, he said, quote, I started watching the news to see what happened, and I saw... Did he turn himself in, or they actually found him? If they actually found him and he didn't turn himself in, he was a criminal. There's nothing else to justify this YouTuber for not being part of it or what. As long as you put your finger in that butt, you're in, bruh.
Oh, your aim. Three students had disappeared, that they had kidnapped them, and the moment that they showed the photos of the missing, I realized that it dealt with the three cadavers that I helped Bozalir. It took only a few days for him to get caught and arrested, and the guilt and anguish was building caught, up inside bro. of him so much that he came clean. Gutierrez was charged with aggravated kidnapping, but is only one of five people involved in these murders. Well, this aggravated kidnapping not a once-off. He was also involved with three other murders. The reason why he did these despicable deeds is the most difficult part to understand. He was only making $160 a week from this gig, which was hardly a king's ransom. If he was selfish enough to disregard the lives of other people, why was he still willing to jeopardize his rap career? The music festival he was scheduled to perform for... Bro, was into deep had to find someone else the most charitable explanation is that he was you missed your debuting uh a gig just because you went and look for a wrong side hustle deserving people's bodies that's tough bro that's tough offered a job that he was too afraid to turn down in prison Gutierrez was placed under special protection on three occasions by the snitch he cooperated with the police it's so now he has been deemed a snitch and could be killed by cartel members from inside the prison still in prison now an enemy of the cartel but at least behind these prison walls he was relatively safe Gutierrez would not face being made into a soup of acid like the film students the trial is still ongoing and is believed to be taken to the supreme this court. is actually fresh twist, bro the property they this went is to still film fresh was allegedly like to be for real owned by an aunt of one of the students however the aunt also allowed the cartel to use this property as a brothel too. She obviously had no So it's like a big mess. That's what I've said. It's like a needle in a haystack. There's a lot of people involved in this. These ties would end up killing her own nephew. That's sad, bro. The reaction Ew. of this entire ordeal was met with a sense of shock, but many have argued that given his violent lyrics and video, we should have seen this coming. Nah. Cardenas, he was a gang man, but let me just say that. El Universal. For two years, Omar screamed in his songs that something was very wrong, and millions saw that, and none of us did. Hey. Hey. No, no I'm making fun. Juice World was rapping about his music, and everyone was dancing out, uh, to his music. So who is this guy? And anyways, anyways, let me not say let me not say much. Let me not just say much, all right? Let's keep it there. Also look at the broader issues at hand. Gonzalez Perez, the head of the country's Human Rights Commission, said, quote, What we have to do is to stop this climate of violence because there's the risk that if there are no hmm. jobs, no education, if the young people don't have recreational opportunities, well, the drug cartels are going to recruit them. The young film students had their whole lives ahead of them, and the film that they were going to bring into the world never got made. And let's not forget the talent that Gutierrez showed as a rapper, too. But the sight of three aspirational young people People, having their lives taken away from them even tugged on the heartstrings of Guillermo de Toro who tweeted quote three students are killed and dissolved in acid the why is unthinkable the how is terrifying there are <sighs> no words to comprehend pretty crazy bro this madness at a film event in Canada del Toro spoke about violence in Mexico in incredibly chilling terms that every moment is almost like a horror movie in itself in reality especially being Mexican uh, things happen out of nowhere and that's the real terror. You can be coming out of a, a dinner and somebody can be shot 10 meters away. Uh, you can be lifted from your home in the middle of the night. There is, every time you're in a horror moment in, in your life in Mexico. Thank you for watching. Please click on the videos you see. In okay, let me just say this. This YouTuber wasn't even part of um, the big scheme. He's just a pawn in not even a pawn is he he's the guy the guy who's told to do something who tells the other person to do something it's like i tell you to do this then that person i told to do something would do won't do it would tell somebody to do it for him it's more like he was just a lucky let's just say that and he ended up dissolving bodies anyways this was six feet echo hope you like this video peace